But Labor says today's announcement of this new governance arrangements for, the, for Canterbury seems to be nothing more than a fresh coat of paint on the old same approach. Ruth Dyson says the Canterbury recovery has been too slow with delays to major anchor projects. She says at first glance there's actually nothing new in today's announcements to speed up progress. Well, is she right? Well, joining me tonight is property developer Anthony Goff and Rebuild Christchurch's Dion Swiggs. Dion, let me start with you. It's Ruth Dyson Wright. It's more of the same, isn't it? It's, it's Sarah under with a new name. I actually just at first glance, I thought the same thing. Uh, I've actually just had a chance to have a good look through the whole document, and there are a lot of differences. There are a lot of changes. Uh, for example, the residential red zone um, in in Christchurch here. One of the big changes is Linz is actually going to be in charge of that from now on. So there's a number of changes in there that are fundamental to how Sarah work and it is different. Uh, the central city stuff is going to be very similar. You've got CCDU now, that'll probably change to something called Regenerate Christchurch potentially. Uh, but the conversation is starting. This is three weeks now or four weeks we've got to have this massive conversation. It's probably one of the most important conversations Christchurch has had in its history. And uh, as a community we really need to get along, read this document that they've put out today and actually understand it so that we can actually have a conversation around what our future is going to be. There is fundamentally no difference though between Regeneration Christchurch and the CCDU, isn't it? Is there? I don't understand. I can't understand what's going on in that part of the document. They don't know. There's there's a couple of words that well, they're saying. Con that's convenient, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. So there's a few there's a few words in there that are going. Oh, well, this is what's going on. But let's let's work that out. And and this is our opportunity to actually say what's going on. What do we think? The concern I have though is that with all, all the delays from most of the anchor projects under the umbrella, Sarah, does that are we supposed to all be so stupid that's going to now disappear and we're going to have regeneration Christchurch that takes over? Regenerate Christchurch, from what I understand here, will be a collaboration of the council are doing their uh, central city rebuild um, project at the moment, and this is going to hopefully work together. So hopefully this means that the council or Sarah or, or the government will actually work together and implement those projects. MB are actually going to be in charge of fundamentally looking after those anchor projects once Sarah leave, from what I can read in the document, which means MB will have more of a control over that rather than Sarah. And there's also going to be that tie-in with, the, um, with uh, the Prime Minister and uh, Cabinet uh, there as well. A, a few changes, we'll still work out what's going on. But the fundamental changes to Sarah's powers, they won't change for five years. Am I right or wrong about that? No, I think you're quite wrong there, and this is when I looked into the document, I actually figured out what was going on a little bit. There are a lot of powers, such as, at the moment, the Minister can say to Council, I don't like what you're doing, you change it. That won't be the case after the new legislation comes through. The new legislation is going to work around, uh, look at things such as, we need to speed up this and we need to speed up that, but there isn't going to be the powers where the minister or any one minister can go and say, you need to change what you're doing, such as changing district plans so and they can things only like say, that. So these powers will mean speed up things? They, they have the power to speed up They things. will have this power to speed up issues around, say, residential red zones, so that means that Linz will have the power to be able to um, do what they need to do for the future use there. A shame, in that a shame though visa. the same speed up approach can't be taken for the Metro Sports Facility, the Convention Centre, the Avon River Precinct, the yeah. Breathe Urban Centre, need I say more? Yeah, Sarah's legislation uh, at the moment can make recovery plans. So we've got the we've got the Christchurch Central Recovery Plan, the Littleton Plan that's not quite done, the Littleton Port Recovery Plan and there's also the Red Zone Offer Plan for um, you know Red Zone uh, in the residential. Those plans aren't done yet, hopefully they'll be done before the legislation because the new legislation won't allow potentially for that to happen. Okay, I want to bring Anthony Goff in here. Anthony, fundamentally with the changes to the east frame, north frame, whatever, is it a start, is it, is it good? What, do, what are your impressions? What do you like about it? What do you don't? I think it's actually really good. Um, I think it would be a terrible shame if we had the government run away from Christchurch and say, ta-ta, we've spent five years here, get on with it. Mm. We're actually, we need their help to get there. On the screen here, Anthony, I want you to talk about this. What are we seeing here? What do you like, what do you like about this? Is, this? is this a step in the right direction? This is Fletcher's is now going to be looking after this new eastern frame. Is it workable? It certainly is. It's got what they call the linear park, which goes straight down the middle of the block. That's very important because that means there'll be a lot more people that will be able to face onto a park area. We need living close to the CBD, and we haven't had that in the past, and that's what we're going to do. So here we've seen the linear park down the middle with all those lovely houses looking onto it. Hey, 
I reckon it'd be a fantastic place to live. And you've got all these bars and restaurants that I'm going to be creating. Hey, come and join us. We'll be open at the end of next year. It's all go. So great timing and great that the government's not running away. They could have easily. Next mm. year's an election year. Hey, they could say, gee, we need to put the effort into Auckland. It's where the voters are. No, they've stayed with us. And I think that's really important and really good. And also to engage better with our local council. That's good. What was your immediate reaction to the news that Sarah was kind of pulling back and there'll be these new legislations that will get rid of the, the other legislations? I think that's good. They, they need to pull back. It's, we'd, it's hard to set rules five years in advance, which is what they did five years ago. So it's time for a change. Need to relook really at the platform we're working from and move forward. And I, I, gee, I'm not surprised that the anchor projects are stretched out a bit. Hey, mine was. Everything takes longer than you ever imagined. We'd all like it to happen tomorrow, but it's not going to. Reality's got to be there. Somebody's got to pay for it. And I think there's been a reality check, and I think it's very positive for Christchurch. Let's hope that positive stuff continues. Dion Swiggs and Anthony Goff, appreciate your time tonight. We'll still